Hi, it's Terry with the Covered Chipboard, and I've just recently released uh, an SVG file for a haunted house that I've been that I just finished, and um, <clears throat> let's try to show you this. The house isn't attached to the bay, so I hopefully it won't wiggle off here. But there's the front, the side. Let's see if I can get to the back here. In the back and the other side and um, the group that I did this for a contest and the group that I put the files into or was interested in it I I think they aren't normally used to using a pattern because I made SVG files and um, DXF files so I'm gonna just do a little quick review here and tell you kind of some of the things that I did. <clears throat> now there were rules for the contest and the base could be no longer or bigger than six inches by nine inches. <clears throat> so to create the base, I'm gonna take this house off. That's my lights. Um, I just took three pieces of black chipboard, cut them to six by nine and glued them together. And then when you make your fence, the strip on the bottom of the fence will cover the edges, raw edges of the chipboard and make that look nice. There's a little spot here where it doesn't, but I just, the edges on black chipboard are not totally black, so I went ahead and just put some black ink on there. Um, then I created another base, which is, again, three more pieces of the black chipboard and glued it to the main base. And that's so that the house has a place to rest on rather than just sitting on this base because the base is not even <clears throat> due to some of the texture that I put in there. But it gives you a place then where you can set your light and then put your house on top. Um, if you don't use the fence, or at least don't use it in the back, you could hinge the house to this and then flip your house back and forth. But you can't do that with a fence, so that's just a, a thought. These lights are submersible LED lights that I got off of uh, Amazon. They're really cool. You can, they have a bunch of different colors you can use or you can make them go strobe where they go from one color to the next. They use like, I think it's three AA batteries. Yeah, three AA batteries. And I have used this one for probably eight days and it's still going strong on those three batteries. So. You don't have you won't have to be chasing batter or changing batteries all the time. So <clears throat> the house, I'm gonna measure this to make sure I get this right because I started on another project. And I don't want to get confused. The house is four and a half wide and four and a half deep, and then it is eight and a half inches tall. So with SVG or the DXF files. Um, when you use them in your cutting machine, you can size this down to be smaller if you want. You can make it larger. That's kind of the beauty of SVG files. Um, so, let's see. The next thing that I might show you, um, this texture is sand mixed in with paint and then some texture um, light turf or fine turf from, um, it's a model train store, and they have all kinds of ground textures you can buy. So I'm not gonna go into that because there's a gazillion files or videos about using that product. Um, for the tree, I cut four of these trees and then I just folded them in half, just about this far up, and then glued them all around leaving room to the hat for the house to fit right back here. So that's all there is to the base, really. Um, anytime you do fences, I use cardstock for the fences. I always cut two of each piece and glue them together because it gives it strength and it stands up firmer. Okay, on the house, the uh, texture here, this is from a an embossing folder from Doris. Or no, it's not Doris. I'm not sure who this one came from. I did get it off of Amazon, 
However, when I went to look for it, they no longer have it. So I'm not sure if you can find it someplace else or not, but any brick texture would work. I used gray cardstock. I ran it through the cuddle bug machine, and then I came back, painted it all a darker gray. Then I came back and whitewashed with the white to get get down into the cracks. And then I came back with um, ink in vintage photo, um, distress oxide ink, and um, black soot distressing ink over the top till I just got it right. Um, I've used white distressing ink on almost all of the black pieces. The um, vellum underneath, I colored the vellum with, um, it's just a white vellum, but I colored it with uh, Tim Holtz alcohol inks and butterscotch and red pepper and just kind of dabbed it on all over just to get that orange glow. Um,